The number of colon cancer cases in U.S. adults under the age of 54 has sharply increased over the last decade. And that's according to a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association on Monday. And it found that for every 100,000 Americans, more than nine were diagnosed with early stage colorectal cancer in 2019. That figure increased to 17.5 diagnoses per 100,000 in 2022. The sharp increase coincides with the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force's 2021 recommendation to move the starting age for colorectal cancer screening from 50 down to 45. And CBS News medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder joins us now. She is also an editor at large for public health at KFF News. Dr. Gounder, we always appreciate seeing you and hearing about your insight. Why did the task force make the decision back in 2021 to lower the age and did it really make a difference? So the task force lowered the age because we've been seeing an increasing rate of colon cancers among younger people. Mm -hmm. So a 45-year-old today has roughly the same colon cancer risk as a 50-year-old about 20 years ago. So they dropped in 2021 the starting age for colon cancer screening to 45 instead of 50. I was actually one of those 45-year-olds who got my first colon cancer in the last several years. But as a result of this, we are seeing earlier screening, mm. earlier diagnosis. So some of these numbers are some of this represents just an earlier diagnosis than would have been made in the past. So being a little bit more proactive in all of this, why are we seeing more diagnoses with younger people to begin with? What was behind even moving that age? Yeah, so we don't entirely know. So some of the hypotheses is, are that um, this is being driven in part by diet. So we have highly processed uh, foods in our diet, less fiber in our diets, higher obesity rates. We also see uh, that there may be a role of the microbiome, which is the bacteria in your gut. Everything from antibiotics to your diet and obesity can change those bacteria, and that can have an impact on inflammation, other drivers of colon cancer. Um, and again, um, you know, we did not have younger people getting screened like this in the past. That is a big change. Mm. What about any disparities in this? Are there certain groups that are more or less likely to benefit from the shift? Yeah, so some of the groups that have lower rates of screening include Hispanic people, uh, American Indian and Alaska Natives, uh, rural people. It might be harder to get transportation to reach a center that does a colonoscopy, lower income populations. And unfortunately, the benefit of those earlier, that earlier uh, age cutoff mm -hmm. for screening the people who are benefiting from that are highly educated and have insurance. Mm. So it's not the people that were facing barriers before. They are still being underdiagnosed. There's also been a lot of concern about HHS Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s reported plans to replace all 16 members of the task force. What would that mean for colon cancer screenings? Well, the last thing we want is for this kind of medical scientific decision making to be politicized. And he already did this with the ACIP, which is the external advisory panel to the CDC on vaccines. Now we're seeing this with the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. Their recommendations are the trigger for uh, insurance companies to cover preventive measures like colonoscopies with no copay mm. uh, under the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. Sure. And so if we start to see politicization, if we start to see perhaps insurance companies not uh, covering that, that could mean all of a sudden Patients have to pay co-pays for this very essential screening. And you have groups like the American Cancer Society, the American College of Gastroenterology, that have been very vocal in saying the task force has to remain independent. Yeah, but a reminder, though, to, to stay on top of all of this, especially if you are in that age group. Uh, Dr. Selene Gounder, thank you very much.